Hello, uh, so this is the second video of the slide set of object-oriented programming. Uh, the, in the last video, we have finished this part. Uh, we talk about the constructors, how constructors are called. Uh, we had a couple, of, uh, no, actually one example about that. And this was a slide I started talking about and couldn't finish. So uh, it is about the uh, Cast keyword, it is an important part of the type system in C++ because um, it will uh, generate errors instead of warnings. Uh, if you uh, do, not, do not follow uh, the uh, const semantics, uh, basically uh, the const keyword modifies uh, what follows it. So, uh, so what are the uh, basically uh, the following data type. So in this case, it is our closest data type. So in this case, it is a car. So it is going to uh, protect the car, not the pointer. However, if you use it uh, like this, it is going to protect the Q, the whole pointer. So this is pretty much the idea. Uh, protecting star P versus protecting Q is based on the position of this const. As a result, if you use uh, touch uh, update uh, on the variable, it is modifying a cache value. That means it is not allowed. Uh, however, this one is updating the car value, so it is not updating the pointer. It is valid. Uh, this one is updating the pointer. It has nothing to do with the content of the pointer, so it is valid. Uh, however, this uh, tries to change the pointer, which is not allowed. So in this way, you can tell this. If you like to protect the pointer, make the pointer constant, you use const uh, in the middle this way. Or if you like to protect the uh, refer to object, in that case, you have to use const at the beginning. If you like both, you can use this one. Uh, so we use uh, that especially with pass by reference. So this syntax is used for pass by reference. And if you modify with constant, uh, C++ will make it uh, a constant reference. That means uh, no operation uh, should uh, make any change on this variable, object, whatever it is. And it will follow also constant semantics on the uh, member function and so on. So if you, it is a constant, uh, it will not allow you to use any method that will modify the object. Uh, and this is another uh, usage. Uh, you can return a reference in uh, C++ as well. That means it will uh, return a value that can be used as L value and the assignment. So for example, uh, you call F, whatever return you like, you may assign something to it. It is especially useful in selected operators. You are selecting a member of a data structure and so on. Uh, but uh, thanks to this const, you can avoid uh, modification of the return object. As a result, it will not be used in the L value. Okay, so this is also another uh, uh, advantage. You can enforce the semantic uh, like that. Uh, so uh, in order to provide the semantics in C, the story is uh, over without having this reference at all. Uh, but in C++, story continues because of this reference values plus an object uh, uh, can be modified without assignment in uh, C++. We have member functions. And you need to protect member functions as well. So it goes beyond the uh, assignment or variable uh, update, but also we have this uh, constant semantics to remember function. So since this uh, parameter is a const, then a clear and a out cannot modify the object as well. If you write this in order to uh, 
uh, a and b are member variables assume a and b are member variables if you use the syntax you are modifying the object actually the members uh, variables are part of the object so you are modifying it so the c++ will not allow you to do so you are going to get a compiler uh, making this const you uh, make sure that compiler doesn't allow that. So you declare that out is a constant member function. That means it is a read, uh, it is accessing the member values, where it was read only. As a result, it will not, it may not uh, change the object. So this is the position of usage. That means after, the parentheses before the curly braces, you use this const keywords and declare out to be constant. But this is a, of course, uh, uh, contradiction because you are actually modifying. There's a con contradiction between these two keywords, this keyword and the assignments you use here. And same here, we have a const and you are using clear and out. That means clear and out are supposed to be const uh, member functions. So uh, in this case, uh, so you tell that I'm going to inspect only the variables. I'm not going to change that. And if there is a const, object you can only use as uh, const uh, member functions uh, so the clear is not going to be called because it is not declared uh, as not const however uh, basically uh, a out is allowed to be called however it is a compiler error so best way uh, to fix it is uh, not call a clear at all because it is not const, we do not call it, and do not modify member functions here. So if you got rid of those and the remaining parts of the member functions are obeying the rules, then uh, it will be well. So this is how you uh, enforce uh, const as a part of data type. Okay, so the data type gets this const keyword. As a result, it will provide you integrity through that. Uh, the compiler will make it uh, best to avoid modification of that value. Uh, and it's part of the type system. Uh, the type checking will make sure it will not happen. So now we are going to talk about uh, copy constructor. Actually, I have given you hints in the previous video. Uh, we have uh, actually three positions, or actually four positions uh, that we uh, should be uh, careful about. Uh, and basically, it is. Uh, uh, in usage of heap variables, okay? So basically I can show you, actually I have a full example, but before showing you all of them. Let me just cut some of the parts and In order to build up our example, I am going to get rid of some parts here. So we can uh, build our example. So just let us check uh, this example. I have uh, this simple, uh, C plus plus object. I call that here. Uh, so it has uh, like a dynamic array, 
we have a size of our buffer and a heap variable of uh, taking care of this storage of this buffer. So it is like a uh, dynamic array that you can uh, adjust size dynamically uh, when you are allocating a new, for example. Uh, in the constructor, we have an integer parameter. It will set the size and it will allocate the heap variable here, uh, report it, and then uh, you can also construct it from an existing string. In this case, it's going to uh, allocate and build up from the existing string. Size is coming from uh, the size of the string. And we have a uh, destructors because I would like to have no uh, garbage left. So this is quite uh, innocent implementation. Uh, and as long as you use it in this way there will be no problem so i have the constructor of hello a world as b a buffer of size 10 at c and how are you and then i will have in the reverse order uh, d c b a are they allocated so uh, as long as you don't use any of the uh, assignment based by value return as a value uh, and initialization, there will be no problem. But if you start using one of them, like E is A, so is A, E is initialized out of A, and you compile your codes and execute it, you will get the search double three detected in t cache blah blah uh, and if you like to get more about it you can check here but walgrant walgrant is a tool providing you uh, garbages and dangling references so if, if you execute your code with walgrant it's going to give you all such complaints so here we have many complaints as you can see so it was saying that uh, there are email trees of size with memory, I believe in the actual part we have also issues, but uh, so it will say email three delete realloc uh, and it says Actually, it will give you, me all information I need. It will tell me uh, operator delete buffer. Uh, so actually, it is on a block of size six already free, and this is the this is the position of the free, and the main I already freed that. So it's telling that and it was located through this new at this point. So it will give you the whole uh, information about. Uh, these issues and we have others so, uh, in uh, printing also uh, there are errors so it is giving you uh, that so uh, what happens what really happened is uh, this initialization was actually expecting a constructor out of object so it was expecting this constructor to be implemented. Since it is not implemented, it will behave as if all members are copied byte by byte. So size will be A size and uh, buffer will be A. So it is going to behave like that, exactly. That means it will uh, work as if you are assigning structures to C structures, byte by byte copy. It is also called shallow copy, uh, mem copy, 
the, the uh, all uh, going into the same uh, position. All elements are byte by byte copied. Okay. Uh, so the, the problem here is a buff is a heap variable, and if you follow this, at the end, when uh, a is deallocated, so deallocated, and e is deallocated, we will have this tilde buffer will be called for e. And it is going to do what it's going to deallocate this buffer. It is deleting this array. And if you do this, so you double free that. So this is then the problem for us. So let us try to figure out where what el where else uh, this may happen. So this is one problem. Uh, let us, and if you, if you this way, you are going to get no errors. So I, I believe this is about this. Uh, some initialized, uninitialized value exists, so it is not a serious issue. My uh, code works without giving any uh, dangling reference or double free and so on. Uh, so now let us try to create another instance. Uh, another position you can create this instance is pass by value. And if you do not use this reference, it is a pass by value. So uh, let us try to say, Try to generate this printing to this some alt function. So it is basically right. Buffers, size of the buffers, and uh, the buff. And the line, so I edit this number function. And I simply say uh, print and, and then B out. Okay. So I do this, and when I do this code and compile my code, so this should be buffer A, and execute my code. I didn't call print function, sorry about that. Uh, so A, uh, print B, let us say, this time. And this is the last one. If you execute this code, uh, there's still a double free. And uh, I believe the reason is obvious because this parameter is passed by B. And since I don't have the copy constructors, it will behave like this. So this is my lookalike copy constructors. And at the end, uh, it has to deallocate V after printing it, it deallocated the local variable, the parameter v, and you go out, they share same variable, same buffer. Uh, so buffer of b is 
already gone. And at the end of the program, program tries to call the constructor of P. As a result, you will see this double free. And actually, Walgreens will give you uh, this in a more detailed form. It is going to tell you this double free, and it will say that it is. Uh, Is already they are treated. The output function I couldn't see that, but if you uh, go into more detail, you will see that it is already they are treated uh, somewhere else. Okay, and thirty-six line thirty-six. It is already they are located. Okay. Uh, oh, this is 36. Okay. Okay, so uh, so this uh, at this position uh, it is already free, so you can see it here. So for CPP fifty one, it is already deleted uh, when it hits that. Uh, it is already deleted, and now you are trying to uh, free again. Okay. Uh, the uh, this is the second position. You can get a problem. Uh, we have um, actually more obvious one, which is, but it is a double problem, uh, which is C is assigned to B. I have used assignment. Assignment semantics is pretty much the same with uh, the assignment of and it is going to give us uh, the same results with this copy constructor, uh, non existing copy constructor. As a result, you will get this result. Uh, again, a double three. Uh, but this is more uh, critical because also we have this definitely lost 10 bytes. That means in use that exist 10 bytes in one block. And what is those 10 bytes? So we have. In addition to our uh, double delete problem, here reported double delete problem, which is exactly the same uh, reason we uh, deallocated C, uh, then we deallocated B. Uh, they were sharing the same buffer, so they are double deallocated. Uh, in addition to that, we have a garbage and obviously garbage is coming from this this 10 bytes garbage see it has a length 10 this assign assignment will overwrite the existing buff value with buff value okay c buff used to have uh, 10 bytes allocated, and you overwrote it with these uh, words string, words, a uh, five byte string. So it is a double free. I believe this is the reason of the uh, the uh, assignment comes with two problems garbage plots, uh, double three or uh, dangling reference. So 
This is our third. And the last one is Uh, when you try to uh, create a temporary object of, uh, and use it in uh, the original object. So if you try to return a buffer uh, as a value of zeros and so I'm trying to write a function which will create a, a buffer with temporary value with uh, all uh, zero values. So the best way is do that. Uh, so we assume we have an open limit. I'm going to give this str i contain the zero, and this is the actual zero for termination. And I create temporary buffer out of this string, and then return this temporary buffer object. So basically, this is creating a string with all zeros and returning it. Uh, this is another addition of C++. You can uh, declare a var variable e anywhere in the code. So you don't have to have this section for declaration then executable. You don't have that separation. So now this code, if it compiles, yes, it compiles, uh, is going to give you uh, this all zeros uh, as an object. So what you can do is you can C is assigned to all zeros of five. Uh, sorry, make buffer. It compiles, and if you execute that, we're going to again complain here. This is the Default uh, execution. The Walgreens will give you uh, a garbage plus uh, the same uh, double delete uh, problem. Because what really happened is uh, there is a temporary object here, and that uh, temporary object is created here as. First, temporary is all zeros, and C is assigned to temporary. So our code is actually working like this, and that tells us. Temporary object is created, and this temporary object is uh, constructed uh, out of the uh, existing object. And this temporary object here that is created from a string, and it is deallocated at the end. And then C is deallocated again. <coughs> Sorry. You will get again a double free with this shared buffer semantics. So this is uh, the problem case, and in order to get rid of that, you can basically, besides assignment, you can get rid of some of the problems through this copy constructor. 
by implementing uh, so if buffer is not equal to null pointers you delete buffer so uh, previously existing value is going to be they allocated in order to in order to get rid of garbage, uh, and then uh, buffer will be a new buffer. If size sizes fit, you don't have to do this, but uh, just to make sure I am getting this of size. Or I zero I plus ten size buffer I is a buffer I. And in order to get rid of the problems in assignments as well. Uh, sorry, this isn't required in the copy constructor, but because it is non-existing object, we don't need it. But for assignment, we need it. So let us implement an assignment operator here. So basically, assignment operators are going to make a void to make it simpler. Operator assignment out of which an object is basically this one. So code is pretty much the same. And the assignment version, I delete it if it is not a null pointer. And the distractor for convenience, you can make it buffer as null pointers just to make sure. So, with help of these two, which will uh, allocate a new storage and make the copy uh, to this new storage, we should be able to get rid of some of the issues here. This is the disadvantage of copy-paste. You also copy-paste the errors. Do not use copy-paste if you can avoid it. So now our buffer will work without any problem. And in Walgreens, you will not see any troubles. And this will also follow this usage. This by value assign. and return as a value cases as cowards. As you can see, there is no garbage, there is no prints. And there is no dynamic reference. So in all green two, it is going to be clean. Just uh, what happens? Now let us report uh, the copy constructor as well. So let us add this new report buffer out of buffer, which will be our copy constructors, it is going to print the new buffers. And this is the reporting of the assignments. Buffer equals buffers. And now, now we can see what uh, happens where. Uh, so we have uh, 
we have a copy constructor call here. And in pass by value, uh, the B is initialized out of uh, the pass parameters uh, in pass by value case. And this is pass by value. And uh, on return, the a local object is allocated. So this is the uh, parameter here. Parameter is the allocated on return. But since we allocate a new storage and uh, copy it byte by byte, there is no problem. And this is the position of the assignment. Again, it will duplicate the buffers and the assign dash without any problem. And this is my temporary object. And after assignment, so this is the assignment position again. Uh, it is the temporary object is deallocated, but since assignment creates another copy, it is intact, no problem. So, hello, how are you? Words A, B, C, D, E, all are in the correct positions. Uh, so, this is the uh, uh, copy constructor and how it is used. Now let us look at our slides. Uh, so those uh, parts, semantics of assignment, parameter passing, return as a value initialization has this uh, members uh, values are copied by, by, by shallow copy case and to the default behavior and copy constructor always have a default behavior if not implemented. Uh, Java uh, solution is much more simple. If you use test by reference, you will not have any uh, problem with those. So I can convert my example into test by reference. I'm going to do that in this moment. So you will get rid of uh, all of these problems. Of course, assignment cannot be done that way, but uh, the others, uh, can be done uh, without any trouble because assignment you expect the same semantics of C. Uh, but the others pass by value can be avoided pass by reference. Return as a value can be avoided as returning a reference. Uh, and initialization you just uh, don't use. We can use uh, again sharing. I'm going to show you in a moment. So implementing copy constructor and uh, assignment operator uh, will solve the issue. Uh, the only difference in assignment operator you have to destroy the existing object. Uh, you can uh, use a very similar uh, codes for both of them. Uh, so the copy constructor has this type signature. We use count keyword in order not to uh, modify uh, the past object. Uh, so this is pass by value case. This is initialization case. It is also it is some sort of explicit copy constructor call. And this is the object returns a value. Uh, and default behavior always exists. And these are the Three cases. This is explicit call. This is pass by value. And this is return as a value. Uh, this return value will create a temporary object, and that temporary object will be deallocated at the end of the state. So those three positions should be pro uh, properly handled through this copy constructor. And if you like, so you can also handle assignment so that you make sure that nothing goes wrong. Uh, and return an object is this temporary object case. Uh, and they are allocated. They allocate at the end the semicolon position. Uh, and 
also uh, this is another position uh, creating temporary object you can uh, call uh, constructors uh, explicitly but uh, they will not change an existing object they will create a brand new object as temporary object and this is the lifetime of this object is basically this one start of the call until the semicolon okay. uh, they have a very short lifetime and they are automatically created and destroyed by uh, destroyed by the copy cons uh, c++ compiler uh, c++ compilers avoid this uh, constructor calls whenever possible and it is called uh, copy elision the idea is simply if you create a temporary object here not temporary, sorry, a local object here, and return exactly the same object. There is a temporary object, they allocate. So instead of having this local object constructed a temporary object, and at the end, they allocate it, the copy elision tells this one is used as the temporary object and they allocate it at the end. So the lifetime of this local object is extended uh, far its activation record. The compiler controls all the activation record. As a result, it is going to uh, keep it. So the activation record stack is preserved. And when the uh, semicolon is reached and everything is done, assignment is called, and so on, it is delegated. It may need uh, extra uh, codes, extra um, exceptional uh, calls. For example, if there is an assignment operator, uh, when F is active, assignment is called on top of that. And both activation records are uh, popped, and compiler can do it and does it. Okay, so this is the idea. Uh, so um, this is copy elision, but uh, of course this is only uh, this can be only done in limited terms. Uh, uh, Sometimes a uh, compiler cannot determine which object is returned. So for example, you can put uh, this instead of uh, a single return, you may have conditional return. If this way return T, otherwise return U, otherwise return B. Which local object is going to be preserved is not known until runtime. So in that case, compiler cannot do this trick. This trick is for compile time only. So it is runtime, copy elision does not work, so it will go uh, until the uh, runtime as a temporary object. Uh, in our example, we didn't observe copy elision, did we? Actually, we observe it copy elision. Uh, so let me show you. Sorry. So actually, uh, we should have this uh, temporary object allocated and deallocated and temporary object deallocated. So we should have a copy constructor plus temporary. So sorry, I couldn't. Uh, Think of showing that. So let us confuse our compiler a little bit to show, get rid of copy elision, create a buffer not used with size 10 just for fun. And let us put this if. And is greater than zero, return TMP, 
else return not used. And it's going to be greater than zero in our case. Now it is going to get a non English, uh, not uh, copy version version. So here, uh, this is this return as a value case. So remember the scope. Let me copy it here for you. Okay. So this was our previous bit copy elation inputs. And this is our not copy elation input, okay. Uh, so this is only for uh, confusion. So you can uh, consider this output without this. This is not used. Okay. So this is not used. This is not used. And this is not used. Uh, so this is our uh, TMP or uh, which is what is our function all zeros TMP and this is temporary object with copy constructors uh, then uh, if you look into the allocation order, first all zeros, the MP they allocate together with uh, not used. Uh, this is assignment and then temporary object is the allocate. Okay, so this is the Okay, so this is the uh, uh, copy elision uh, without copy elision uh, story of this same example. Okay, so we have uh, extra one copy. So copy elision uh, basically. Do not uh, consider this one. Copy elision avoids. Uh, this one and uh, this one and delays uh, the the allocation of this at this position. Okay, so this this one is moved here. Okay, so this is the elision of copy elision. Sorry, I dropped my uh, mic. Okay, so turning back to the slides. So this is the copy elision. Uh, if you, so this is an optimizer by compilers, uh, optimization by compilers. Uh, most of the contemporary compilers do that. And we have some sort of flexibility to compilers in different optimization levels. Compilers may or may not use them, so it is not it is not well deterministic. But uh, it is uh, it will add uh, much optimization in your code. So going uh, back to this discussion of uh, passed by reference and back to our example, how can I uh, leave with us the copy constructors, basically, you will avoid as much as possible having this, for example. Instead of having this buffer, you can make this, make it 
a reference and as a result. So this and this code you will not have any constructor or destructors. That means there is no copy constructor or anything else, so you shouldn't have to implement copy constructor at all. Uh, in uh, all zeros case, you can still make this return as a reference. Uh, let us see what happens. I got an uh, warning. Uh, so it says that you are returning a reference to a local variable. Uh, so it is for the time it gets a warning, so it is not going to give me. So this local variable reference is returned and they are they allocated as usual and I get a segmentation fault. So it is uh, not a good idea. So they are, the later lifetime is uh, short. Uh, you can make it constant, but it will not change it because of this lifetime. Uh, but uh, without copy elision, sorry, uh, we got this without copy elision. Uh, okay, again, didn't work. Okay, uh, since uh, the uh, assignment uses the reference uh, creation of uh, not, not existence of temporary, will create a problem. So returning a reference will not. Uh, work in this case because assignment is not by uh, reference. So uh, you cannot use in this way. Okay, the local variables uh, cannot be used that way. But uh, still, we have a solution. Uh, we are going to create a uh, by the way. We shouldn't have carried that one here. Uh, so I can make temporary uh, buffer pointer here. And we can create a buffer out of the string this way. Okay, and then I can return start TMP. So now I am not returning the temporary variable, but reference to the reference, uh, reference to the heap variable. And this way, I got rid of the problem here. I only have a dangling reference, uh, sorry, garbage problem here, but otherwise it will work. Uh, also, for this one still, uh, we don't have a alternative, but this is another choice. E is not a new variable in this case. It is not allocated. So instead of five, now I have uh, four variables. T e and A refer to same variables, so uh, the, the structure is, call, is called only for one of them. This is what happens in Java in a more dynamic way. You can execute this assignment any place in your code. So, uh, test by reference gets rid of most of the things. Uh, so, in the declaration, you can use it this way. And test by value, you can pass it as a reference this way. Uh, we can have return as a reference so that we can use this syntax. 
but you should have a heap variable inside, not a local variable, as we had in the example. If you like to avoid uh, this is the Ali's case, if you like to avoid uh, uh, modification of the preference, you can mark it as const. Uh, this example creates a temporary object and gets a, a const reference to it. And it is going to create a temporary. Uh, this should, this is a very value problem because the temporary object is not alive uh, at the end. So it will not allow it to give a reference to a longer lifetime object. Uh, and we have a couple of problems here. Um, uh, the temporary objects uh, are actually R values, so they they references as R values. So you are not allowed to pass them as into non-const references. So you've got a temporary object like this person Mary, and you like to pass it to a non-const reference that will give you an edge. But if it's const, there is no problem. Okay. So this way, it will make sure that it is not. Uh, modifiable, it is not mutable. It's another uh, term for that mutability of every uh, object. Um, so, this uh, R value reference will be more clear in the uh, next part, which is the move constructor. The temporary objects are R values, L values. So the new uh, standard of C++, new standards of C++, make that distinction. R value reference and L value reference. Uh, so the next thing we have to be considering is the efficiency. Parameter passing is efficient or not. Uh, the copy semantics is good sometimes, it is desirable sometimes, but if you have large objects, like 100 kilobytes, for example, you can have such a large buffer, 100 kilobytes. Each passing of a parameter and returning as a value will end up in this 100 kilobytes of memory movement, which is not uh, inexpensive. It means your CPU has to copy those byte by byte. Even the fastest CPU with some extensions spend some cycles on that. And if you do millions of times, you will you'll wait a lot. Uh, however, uh, the reference is efficient because you're only modifying the pointer one word, just eight bytes at most are exchanged, regardless of size of the uh, data object contains. Uh, so uh, if you consider efficiency instead of pass by value, pass by reference is a good choice. With help of const, you can get rid of this uh, modification. However, of course, sometimes you need copy semantics. And in that case, you have pass by value in your head. Uh, copy constructors solve most of the problems. Uh, and if you have to use copy constructors, pass by value, uh, and specifically temporary object creation. So return as a value, you have to use return as a value and create a, a new copy. Uh, sometimes it is uh, desirable uh, to steal the sources instead of creating a new copy. Because temporary object is temporary anyway, so it is going to disappear at the end. So why do you have to copy the content? You can steal the existing content out of the object if it is not going to be used again and use that instead. So basically, this R values are, have short lifetime. So stealing their resources will not harm the integrity. So in C++, they define this R value references along with move constructor and assignment move constructor to solve this problem. 
Uh, by the way, I am going to post a more comprehensive example with copy constructors in the uh, call. Uh, if I don't, please uh, re remind me. So uh, C++ I will introduce the following an R value reference, which is indicated by the double ampersand symbols. So uh, if you have such a reference, you can use it in the left side of side of the assignment, or passes a non-cast reference. Uh, move constructor, instead of copy constructor, now we have a new constructor, which is move constructor. Uh, and we have an assignment move. So you can have both of them. Uh, if it's an R, uh, let's see. Uh, Right-hand side of the assignment, if there is a our reference, it is, uh, this assignment operator is called, otherwise the usual assignment operator is called. And if you like to explicitly uh, call move, so copy constructors are uh, usually implicit. If you need, there is this standard uh, move, which will convert an uh, L value into an R, R reference, R value reference, but stealing its resources. So I'm going to talk about what stealing means. Uh, so the uh, move constructor uh, can be implemented anyway, uh, but the usual way is heap variables are uh, stolen from the object at the right hand side. That means uh, the pointer is just copied, and the right-hand side object object is left as not invalid but unallocated. So the values will be unusable. So, for example, uh, you have a move constructor for a binary search tree with thousand elements. After this move construction, the source. Uh, binary search tree will have no element. All of the elements are moved in the uh, constructed object. So you don't have to, since you know this, you don't have to create a new tree. Okay? You have an existing tree, create thousand element tree out of this one, so you will have two copy, then they are located. Instead of this, you just have root of this tree will be assigned to root of this one. And this disappears. That's it. Uh, usually, you don't leave it as invalid state. You put it in a minimum valid state, like having root now. So it will be empty tree, empty this, whatever, it is, or empty buffer. Uh, move constructor default uh, binding is return as a value cases. Uh, it is more efficient, and if you like to call it explicitly, you use this std move uh, with ex explicit calls. Since it is uh, return as a value cases, it is also subject to copy elision as well. Uh, so the structure is called for the R value also, so you have to put it in a uh, valid uh, state like in our buffer example you can put a one byte pointer if you like uh, in order to keep it in the valid state so this is an example i have i can show you the move constructor in this example or uh, let us try our example here i just Most of the parts of this speaking pass by reference. So let me go back. Okay, I believe this is this is the case. Now let us implement the move constructor. So typically move constructor can be implemented this way. 
the signatures get extra percent here. Uh, the size is like that. And the buffer is simply a buffer. But let's call it move constructors. Uh, but a buffer will be one byte. A size will be set to zero. A buffer zero is. So this is the minimum well state. For us, it is this one. So it's just one byte counting zero so that uh, it will not be causing any. Uh, segmentation fault or dangling reference and so on. So let us compile it with an error. Okay. So the constructor is not constant, of course. So this is copy. So now I have no constructors. And what really happened is test by value didn't change any behavior. It is the same. Assignment didn't change any behavior. It is the same. But this one has changed. So now I have a move buffer. Uh, my alt buffer has zero size. So my temporary object has. Uh, zero size, the return object has zero size, and the stolen uh, buffer is on the temporary object and it is allocated here. And this is the assignment. If you like, we can implement the move assignment as well in the same way. So now The same function is implemented as move assignment. Uh, uh, this is called move assignment. Okay. So this is move assignment added to and now you see the difference between the move assignment and the proper assignment. If uh, the left hand side is a L value reference, a legitimate reference like arbitrary one, it is the regular assignment. If it is a temporary object, uh, that temporary object is created through move assignment. And it is assigned through uh, move assignment, uh, temporary object move constructor, assignment move assignment, and as a result, temporary object as zero size as the local object. So local object heap is stolen by C. Uh, of course. Holgrin will give a problem, may give a problem here, which is the garbage. We didn't uh, avoid the garbage, so let us avoid the garbage as well. So, so we have to add this code. Still, the same problem exists. And now I avoid the garbage as well, so I have a clean code. Uh, so I believe this will uh, show you uh, the difference between move constructor and copy constructor. Um, I have a full uh, example. I am going to show you those example. Uh, send you those examples in the coding uh, activities. Again, please remind me if I don't. Uh, so this is, uh, so I have a full fledged implementation of this link list, which shows the return as a value case here. 
and this assignment. So then you have this assignment that is going to have a move constructor out of existing linked list and assignment will use that as well. So uh, this temporary object created and returned will be used by this resulting assignment. Linked list uh, copy is much more expensive you may, as you may guess which you need to construct all of the nodes one by one. So now let us talk a little bit of operator overloading. We already did operator overloading. We have uh, many examples use that, especially with assignment operator. Uh, operator overloading is not essential in a programming language, but some of the languages choose to uh, implement them like C++. This is for uh, code readability uh, if you are following uh, the rules cor cor correctly. Uh, so you can implement this way uh, selector abstractions, basic algebraic operations, and so on, uh, thanks to operator overloading, and it will be uh, more readable. For example, data structure uh, selection and tree selection can be implemented by square bracket operators. So you don't have a special uh, select call. So it is not a big deal, but it has sometimes. Uh, but we have a basic rule to not overuse it. So for example, uh, plus should mean plus, or plus equal an assignment with plus should look like in that one. So you shouldn't use, for example, uh, count operation. The length of a data structure is overloaded as plus. Doesn't make sense. It will confuse uh, the code reader. Uh, your basic uh, motivation is just to make it more readable. Uh, C++ has basic rule. It allows overloading of existing operators with same arity and precedence. That means plus has two uh, operands, so it is overloaded as two operands, not three, not one. Star has two operands uh, for multiplication case. If it is the dereference, it is one, but it, is, it cannot be overloaded. So it has two operands. Uh, minus, we have unary minus, binary minus, zero minus, and so on. Uh, the precedent does not change, so plus is lower precedence than multiplication, you cannot change it. Uh, and the operation should require a class at least, so you cannot overload integer integer. You cannot overload pointer pointer. They are primitive data types, objects uh, or structures can be overloaded. That way. Uh, there are two positions of an uh, operator implementation uh, with a as a class member this way. So in that case, uni operators will turn out into no parameters. The operand is the object itself. Uh, the binary operators will get only one parameter, which is the right-hand side. Uh, if you, uh, sorry, this one, this. Uh, if you uh, try to, uh, implement them outside of the class. Unary gets one parameter, binary gets two parameters. This is usually uh, helpful uh, when the first operand, the left-hand side operand, is uh, a non-class, since you have to do that. Right? Uh, otherwise, using this uh, in-class versions, so this one, uh, and this one is better. But if it is the first operand like this, uh, you don't you don't have any chance to implement this way. Uh, however, in this case, it is not uh, the plus plus at the beginning, so you have to do that way and so on. So at least left hand side and right hand side are significant. That's why we uh, use that. Uh, oh, this is a long recording, I have to turn the lights on. Uh, so if you uh, 
access uh, member variables, you have to use friend function in the uh, second case. So, uh, so this is one of the disadvantages of using outside of the class. You have to make it a friend, otherwise it will not work. I'm going to talk about the friend one. We have many uh, operators in uh, C++. You can overload. Uh, this is binary plus as a class. This is unary plus. And this is less than this is exclamation mark as the not operators. Uh, for increment and decrement, we have a trick. If uh, plus plus is a postfix operator, so like x plus plus, you can use the syntax. And if you need to uh, implement both in different semantics, we have this trick. If it is, uh, sorry, this is. Uh, plus plus x implementation. X plus plus implementation is this one, and it is a very strange syntax. You can add some integer parameter which you are not allowed to use. Okay. You put that just to show that it is a postfix operator, x plus plus. It's, it's like you are going to put something next to it, but you are not. And this is the trick. This is a dirty and ugly trick, but this way you can overload plus plus uh, plus plus x and x plus plus as two different functions. Uh, the type names can be used as operators just to implement uh, the conversion so that uh, within parentheses double x can be uh, implemented this way. Uh, so I actually this should return double so this have slide has a problem. So this should return a double in case uh, member function operational, but this should return a double so that you convert the value into a double. This is assignment, this is operators uh, implementation. Uh, and it can expect any data type like a character and so on. Uh, the parentheses can be overloaded as well. Parentheses can have arbitrary number of parameters. So this is an exception of this arity problem. In parentheses, you can put as many elements uh, you like. So it is, uh, in this way, x is an object, x parentheses a, b, c, d is going to be uh, implemented this way, uh, which will confuse the reader, by the way, because they will assume that it's a function, but it is not. So this is function, that better not use it, but C++ allows you to do so. Uh, the reference operators, new and delete are operators, by the way, you can write your own uh, allocators uh, this way. Uh, we have some invalid overloading, so you cannot overload them, but the others. Uh, so these are all um, Uh, possible overloading and their user syntax. You can uh, match each and every one of them if you like. Please spend some time on this puzzle. For example, A plus B is this one and so on. You can uh, play this game and solve this puzzle. And these are the outside implementations. Left hand side being an integer, for example can be implemented this way. And this is the prefix uh, A implemented this way. Postfix can be implemented in the class. Uh, this is assignment with operators. Uh, these are uh, the cases you uh, like to overload someone else's. So this is another motivation implementing outside. Uh, this all stream is a class of standard C++ library. It doesn't belong to you. You don't have the source, You're, so you have to do it this way as an external function. Same this way. Uh, so first operand will be an auto stream. Second operand will be your object, and you should return the same operating auto stream so that you can change the output operators this way. So integers, then your class, you return it. It is applied to be and so on. This let this associate with a combination. And 
we have uh, front declarations. Front declaration is just to uh, relax this uh, private uh, restriction, member function protection a little bit. You can declare either a function of front or a class as a front. In that case, if it is a class, that class can access private members of rational class uh, members, private members of rational class. Uh, if it's a function, it can access private members of operational. So especially this uh, output operators, you are going to need that. The position of friend is not important. Important it expects only uh, the prototype. You don't have to give parameter names. Uh, it works this way. Uh, but you create an uh, explicit dependency in your code, so it will not. It will now after this, it will depend on uh, so the. Rational implementation will depend on hash. So if you make any change on rational, uh, hash needs to be changed as well. For example, you may choose to change value of A into something else. That means you have to go source of hash and change that as well. This is the disadvantage of having the friend. So do not use it too much. Uh, how objects are implemented? Uh, basically, uh, one assumption is this one. Uh, if a person has this 40 bytes of cache, an integer, size of integers, a uh, function, so I have to keep a function pointer, another function, I have to keep another function pointer. So you may expect, expect that size of this person is sum of all of them. However, it is like this. Size of a person is exactly same as size of a structure without the members, member functions. So you can erase all of the member functions and size will be the same. Uh, why? Because C++ compiler doesn't have to keep that pointers to, within each object. Simply because it's a compile time entity and it's the binding problem. The C++ compiler can bind it anytime it likes, okay? Uh, so in this way, it can bind it and calculate it and use it in any time it likes. Thanks to that, it doesn't have to be stored in each object. You can have hundreds of objects and that uh, function doesn't have to be repeated. But it's the choice of design in Python, for example, or JavaScript, uh, it's dynamic. You can add new functions into existing objects. So you can have 10 objects of same class, but one of them may miss one of the member function variable, the other can have, and so on. It's completely dynamic, so that all of the uh, objects contain this uh, function. Uh, but in C++, it doesn't have to be that way. And by the way, we, I didn't uh, mention uh, the Python operator overloading. Python over operator overloading is uh, through this uh, underscore underscore uh, functions. We have set of functions each map to a different pointer. If you are interested, in, you can ask in the form. I can answer you operator overloading in Python as well. So uh, this storage is not containing the function. So how C++ finds that? Uh, so basically, member functions are like functions with a scope, with a class scope. That's it. But since they are some, they work like somewhere else in the same scope. They need context. So when you call get name, you should give them which object you are referring to. So this is to this uh, unvisible this. So actually, your uh, function declaration is this way, without any parameter. But implicitly, the C++ compiler maintains an extra parameter here. In Python, this is explicit. In C++, this is implicit and hidden. And all of the member functions have this extra parameter as the first one, the others follow, which is the pointer of current object, so that context of the uh, function is taken from that. 
So when you call uh, the get name and use name, for example, the get name function, assume this is a regular function. Yes, this. And resolves ID out of this and name out of this. As a result, it is going to update or inspect or use the current object. So it will behave like the member of the current object. So this is the implementation. Uh, we have uh, only uh, exception of this is to uh, virtual members and the uh, multiple inheritance, uh, virtual inheritance. Uh, they add extra pointers so here. So two pointers are added. Uh, but otherwise, you can assume that size of person is same as uh, size of person without any member function. We are going to talk about those exceptions later. So uh, this is the end of my uh, lecture today. Thank you for watching. Uh, please uh, ask your questions in uh, department forum. Thank you very much. See you later.